Well, hello, Bob Dendry here, and welcome back to City Skylines, where we are building the town of Lorikeet Valley. Now, last episode, we did a couple of things. We expanded our zoo a little bit further. We built this new sort of exclusive suburb on the banks of the river, and we expanded with a little more residential in the Grove Park area. Now, at the end of last episode, we also uh, unlocked a new tile, which is sort of this tile here on top of this uh, sort of hill slash mountain plateau, whatever. And today we're going to be building a new industry area to serve that. Um, as you can see, we've got a lot of trees. We have forest resource. So we're going to build our forestry industry up here. The first challenge we're going to have in doing that is actually getting a road up the mountain. Um, so I have had a little bit of an experiment with going up sort of this area here where my mouse is. And it was actually quite tough to get a decent grade, even using plenty of turn backs. Let's have a look at our uh, grades and see how things look. So as you can see, they are quite dramatic, aren't they? But I think potentially actually if we go up sort of this segment here, which has a much sort of longer um, slope towards the top where we get to that sort of dark green, that may be a better option for us. We'll still need to use a lot of turn backs, I think, but it might be a little bit more manageable. So we're going to start with that. Um, I think I'm going to use the rural roads to do that. And that would probably be consistent with what you'd actually see as a, a road going up one of these mountains here in Australia. So we're going to try going for some nice um, sort of switchback roads. We might try going in with a um, sort of a more gradual um, entrance. Sort of start, sort of just as we start that uh, switchback and then we might transition across to um, straights with, what do you mean, invalid shape. Sort of straighter roads with just the, the switchback at the end. And a reasonably compact one at that. So it goes sort of a, a four unit uh, radius switchback there. And we'll switch back to straights. And we'll keep going. We have a uh, Anarchy on, so we'll switch that off so we don't get too many trees in our road and we'll go back and fix uh, the trees that we have there already shortly. I do want to avoid this rock, I, I think it should stay there. Um, so we might sort of diverge a little bit from our switch back and just see if we can cut around that uh, rock there. And then we'll uh, just switch back to a uh, switch back to the switch back. <laughs> How are we looking? We're, I think we're going quite well, to be honest. looking. So we're almost to the top now, so I think we've, we've done pretty well managing that. We'll use our uh, network multi-tool to sort of see what sort of grades we have, <laughs> which could be uh, interesting. But I think we're going all right. So we might sort of break off from the switch back type thing and just see if we can just climb up sort of going, cutting across our contour lines a little bit. So let's pull out our network multi-tool then and see how it looks. Uh, we'll go from probably this bit here. We Slope mode is what we want. And can we go all the way to the bottom? No, so we'll need to pick a, a point in between. Once again, as you can see, I don't see the percentages, which is really annoying. <laughs> so we'll, I guess we'll just have, have to hit enter. And I still don't see them. That's very annoying. Maybe we'll try again and see if we can see them. Okay, there we go. So it's, they're showing up now. And so nine and a half. So still quite, quite dramatic. 
Um, so, I mean, they are, they are bad, obviously, but I feel like that's not entirely inconsistent with how a um, <laughs> how a, one of these sort of cutback um, sort of roads will look like in Australia. But we might get just one further switch back in and see if we can uh, do a little bit better with that one. All right, how are we looking now? Let's give it another go. And enter seven and a half or 7.1, not seven and a half. Where did I pull that from? <laughs> um, okay. Yeah, I think I think we, we're gonna let that sit, I think. Um, we're gonna do a bit of uh, smoothing on this terrain. So <laughs> it's not so silly. And I'm going to quickly fix up the uh, uh, trees we have in our roads. Okay, lovely. Now the question is, where are we going to connect this up to um, Birdsong Way? Hmm. We've got this roundabout here. It would need to be um, reorganized to work, which we do need to reorganize it anyway, because I didn't quite get the intersection markings working properly. <laughs> sort of stuffed them up. So, I mean, why not? Let's see if we can get this to work. So we'll need to sort of uh, lower our train line a little bit. I don't think we want it. Hmm. Hmm. Actually, that, that is an opportunity for us. So I have noted that this intersection here is a bit crap. Um, it's very close to the roundabout and it's a four way. So we've had some issues with traffic there. So I wonder if we've got the opportunity to realign Scott Street so that it comes onto our roundabout here. And we can then have a, um, uh, just a T intersection breaking off of Scott Street, which will go join up with, uh, with the mountain way here. So I'm going to do a little bit of experimenting with that and see if we can get something nice going there. Thank you for the academic year reports. I do appreciate it. So could we have a bridge straight off our roundabout? Is that high enough? It's not. As you can see, we can just see the uh, wires are just poking through the bridge there. So I wonder if we can erase it anymore and will it look silly? So it needs to be about here. I, and I think that still works, to be honest. So if we can just pop a row just through here, staying the same height or thereabouts, we can use uh, move it to fix that if we need to. And then we can curve that around, um, going back down to ground level. And if we just quickly pause the game here and sort of remove these couple of sections here and see if we can get a nice join on here. I'm not getting a... Oh, here we go. There is the road guideline for that. Okay. I think that's not too bad, to be honest. Let's have a look. Oh, they're a little bit too low, but I think uh, just a couple of steps in move it will fix that. Okay, nice. And we might just make sure they are both the same height as well, just so it looks a little bit nicer. Okay. And yeah, 
cool. So we've got enough clearance there. And uh, this little section of Scott Street can uh, be abandoned, I guess, or removed. Sorry to all the cars that are using it. <laughs> um, and cool. So from here, we can probably from where our bridge starts, we'll break off a little road to go off towards our mountain pass. And we'll start off with a section of paved road. And then from there, we'll just switch over to our uh, asphalt road. And yeah, I think that's nice. And that looks good. Um, our switchbacks look okay. This sort of stew still have a little bit more um, that we can sort of go up to get to this highest point here. And I'm thinking our uh, forestry area will probably be sort of right on the edge of this tile. So what we'll do, we'll check out how our topographic lines look and they don't look too bad. What we might do is try and sort of plateau this out. Um, so we've got a nice flat pad that we can start laying down on. I will unpause as well so the city runs. And I'm thinking um, if we just pop that back on, we can probably try and get around about to this first sort of major line where it goes to dark green. That'll line it up with this bit here as well, I think. So yes, there is a lot of earth movement happening here. <laughs> Um, but I think it will be okay. Take it right to the edge, right? In fact, over our city limits line. So I'm sure the state government would not be happy that we were uh, doing work in another council area or <laughs> whatever this is here. But it will have to do. So yeah, we've got a nice little area here that we can start off with. So I might go ahead and start to lay down some roads here. Uh, so we will continue using our asphalt roads. I'm just gonna lay down a nice straight section here. So we can just start, store, uh, start I should say, uh, planning what we're gonna do. Let's get down an industry area. As you can see, we've got some nice forestry resources here. And we're going to start by laying down our main building. Well, I put it right on the edge there. Apparently this is a sawmill up here. I don't know if it is, to be honest, but uh, each to their own, I suppose. And we're just going to start by doing some really basic stuff. So, I, in fact, let's connect it up by road so we can actually start uh, <laughs> actually getting some uh, some resources moving. Oop. I wanted our curved road tool there. Is our road. It's over here. Okay. Uh, we might do a little bit of network multi-tool just to see what our uh, slope is looking like. So probably from here down to about here. Ooh. Done. 8.6. Very bad. <laughs> um, yeah, that wasn't quite what I was intending for that to be, but that's okay. It's okay. Next, we will start to get a few tree plantations laid down. What do we got growing here? I don't know if they're alders. I think I've... Uh, <laughs> I think I've like... Uh, okay. We're going to have to use Bob to, uh, <laughs> to fix this up, I think. Because uh, we do still use, like, European trees in Australia mostly to... Um, think anyway to, for our sort of planned forested areas so we'll have to use Bob to uh, change that back we've clearly changed it over to a uh, what, an iron bark so can we change it back just for this in these buildings 
in all buildings. So if we change that back, uh, that should hopefully... No! I didn't want all buildings. Oh, God damn it, Bob. All right, well, whatever. We'll have to... Oh, far out. <laughs> okay. Um, all right, whatever. It is what it is. We'll look at fixing that down the line. And we might try and build a, uh, a little, little grid with some um, with some more. So how far do we need to go out here? So nine, it looks like, will take us to the back there. Yep. So if we go out another nine, I think, we should be able to get a little, uh, a little cube of these, a little square. No, we could have gone out one less. That's okay. Alrighty, um, let's get some water up here. We might probably... I wonder how much water they actually need. Oh, our city is actually starting to run short of water, in fact. Um, what we might do... I'm just going to quickly pause. Because we've now unlocked our, our large water tower. So I think we might pull this small water tower out and actually replace it with, uh, with a big one, first of all. And once that turns on... Perfect. Um, still need more sewerage treatment. So it looks like we should be running short somewhere, but we're not actually. We are. St we're still meeting um, demand, but just very close to it. Um, so we might potentially we could join this up to city water eventually, but I think at least at the moment it does make sense for it to be joined up. So we can actually set this up with its own. Um, own water service. And we need some electricity as well. So we've got heaps of electricity. So we might join it up to the grid. I wonder if we have any like even bigger power lines that we could run. No, it looks like we're just using our standard power lines here, which are, I mean, I suppose they're high voltage lines anyway. And we're just going to see, we're just going to run these straight up the side of the mountain. And... Well, we'll just connect them up there right now. Um, and we'll just run a couple of... Uh, rural or suburban power lines to cover everything else. Oh uh, yes, and we do need sewerage actually, don't we? I reckon these these places would have like um, uh, septic tanks. I don't think they would have, they wouldn't have um, town water. So I guess we could put down like a inland water treatment plant or something like that. Um, which would sort of, uh, I guess, function as, or, you know, stand in for what, what the septic system would be. We don't want it too close to our industry because I believe pollution will actually impact us in terms of that. So we might just build um, this little septic system a while away for us to uh, take care of all the, the poos and stuff coming out of the, uh, out of the workers. <laughs> I think just a small one is probably going to be good for us for now. And just a couple of things we need to do. We need to hook it up to our water network we've got set up here. And then we need to just get it onto some power. Perfect. And... There we go. Alrighty. Lovely. So we've now got the basics to sort of start doing some work here. Um, so we are producing raw forest products. We need somewhere to store those. And if we have a look, we should have some, yeah, we've got a few warehouses. I think warehouse yards make the most sense for forestry products as they would probably be 
I would assume, be kept outside. Um, but we might put down a little bit more grid here. Um, because this is going to be, uh, I would assume, quite a large forest area based on what I'm planning. All right, so we actually need a log yard for these, not a um, not a warehouse yard. So we'll put a couple of those in. Um, so that will give our um, forestry truck somewhere to take all these logs that we're starting to produce. We might put down a little path through the middle here. I don't know if it'll actually provide any value whatsoever, but uh, it'll look like it's maybe like a path that the workers would use or maybe like small tractors or something. Yeah, it looks all right. And of course, need to connect all of this into our water and power grid. Perfect. Okay, and the next step we need to be looking at now is a sawmill. I don't think we have anything else unlocked right now. No, we do not. So this will allow us to um, convert our raw forestry products into our first sort of specialty product, uh, which is planed timber. So we might sort of continue on this, working towards this being a bit grid-like. And we'll lay down maybe two sawmills at this point. Cool. All right. And of course, they, they're going to complain because they don't have forestry products, but those will be arriving soon. I promise. And we'll just get it connected up to our um, water network. So we've got that running now. And we can see we do actually have some vehicles that are coming down now, which is excellent to see. And while we're sort of just starting our production over there, let's have a look and see what's happening in the rest of the city. Yeah, we've got a bit of traffic building up. Ooh. Into the city, traffic is building up quite a bit. Okay. So what's happening here? Why, why are you doing that then? So we've got gridlock in our city, in fact. So let's have a look at our traffic. Traffic is 39%. That is absolutely terrible. That's, that's, a, to be honest, that's embarrassing. We've got traffic backed up all the way pretty much to our highway here. So where is everyone going? Let's have a look at our traffic routes and see. So a lot of people going to our, uh, our zoo here. But a lot of people are just going into the city as well. And a lot of people are going through and in fact going on and around to our... Uh, suburb over here so hmm I'm concerned that it looks like people are actually cutting through our zoo to turn into the city here and I don't like that movement at all we do have a problem here of course that we have um, sort of a couple of collectors that are joining up and we also have a local road here that's gridlocking it a lot so I think we need to potentially cut off this road. I don't know if it works. So we're gonna do that and we're gonna sort of attach it back up right up to here, but not actually connect it to our collectors as a bit of a stub road, a no through road, so to speak. Hmm. Yeah, we'll just uh, fix up that height as well. Okay, so that's the first sort of stage we can make. We're gonna need to readjust um, some of our sort of traffic now. We don't actually need these to be four-lane roads anymore, in fact. We can pop them back down to three, I think. And that will still allow us to have a dedicated turning lane. And other than that, we should be fine. Let's have a look. What roads do we have here? So what are we running with right now? I believe it's these roads here, I think. Let's have a look. Um, yeah, so, well, obviously the, the eight-lane version of it, but, uh, yeah, same roads. So we do, we're probably overbuilding now to have eight lanes here. So we can 
potentially look to reduce down to three. Let's have a look and see how that looks, first of all. I think that looks a bit better. And if we have a look at our traffic manager, I'm going to assume I've set, well, I had, I'm sure. Um, and we're going to set up some um, turning lanes here, dedicated turning lanes. That's a control click that does that. So we now have no um, vehicles are sharing lanes with vehicles that want to go in a different direction. So that's a good um, sort of thing to start with. Uh, we do we do have a uh, bottleneck here when we're going down from three to two, but we're not going down from four to two, which was, to be honest, quite a silly um, uh, decision to allow that to happen. I'm going to unpause now and not uh, go to the pause menu, and we'll just leave that to run and see if that at all changes how things are flowing. Other than that, I can see that we have some issues here with uh, vehicles wanting to turn at these intersections turn right in fact in both directions we don't have dedicated turning lanes which is a problem in itself and i think probably a lot of vehicles are using these to cut through into the city which i'm not sure i like definitely this is an important road coming out from the zoo but i don't know if we should have um cars going through here i think that's probably a poor decision so what we might do is do a bit of managing of uh, what our, our vehicles can do here. So obviously the left turns are all fine. It's a fairly non-conflicting move to do that. And I'm thinking... Do we have... Actually, let's check. Do we have any buses that are using this road here to turn right? because we may have some, and I think we do, actually. Um, let's have a look. What am I looking for? Looking for public transport. We do. Okay, so we can't make this a no right turn unless we sort of reroute our bus route, which I'm not keen to do at this point in time. Um, but potentially what we could do is stop this right, these right turns across traffic on our uh, on our main road birds on way here so let's have a look and see if that uh, will help us out at all so we're gonna have straight through there um, I'm going to allow a sort of dual movement there I'm okay with that and then we will have um, dedicated turning lanes on these roads but no no we we need a straight through, of course we do. Uh, um, actually, no, that still works. That is okay. Let me do this. Okay, and we're going to need to set up our own sort of custom uh, traffic lights here. Now, the... The sort of auto time traffic lights, I think, are a fantastic place to start. They don't actually line up with how most Australian traffic light cycles work, though. Um, in that they have um, basically have one direction, all sort of all movements are possible. For example, going from down to up here. In fact, from up to down here, you can see you can turn left to right and go straight, and the other direction can't move at all. Whereas in Australia, we would have your right turns in both directions on, on a cycle and then straight through. So we're gonna stop this and we're gonna do some adjustment. So first of all, what is our first cycle here? And it's going in this direction. We don't have right turns. So what we can do is turn these off. I'm gonna just change these modes. Maybe, no, I'm not actually. Um, and we're gonna allow so straight and left in both directions. This is our primary movement, I would say. So we'll chuck that up to a 13. Um, next one is um, one of these cross movements. So what we're going to do here, we're going to say, we have to edit it as well. We're going to say no left or straight. 
but we're going to allow right turn here and we're going to allow left turns from our main road as well. 3 to 8, I'm happy with that. Um, for our next movement, it's now going to be uh, straight and left from both of our side streets and reds for the rest. And then we don't actually need a fourth cycle. If, if we had uh, right turns from our main road, obviously that would take up a fourth cycle, but as we don't, we can safely delete that. So, let's get this started and we'll just let it run for a while and see how it does. If we check out, we're um, on 43%, so still very, very low traffic. But that's really the only traffic we have in the city. We also, obviously, we've also got the issue here that this is the only way to cross the river, unless you want to go all the way out of the city over here. So a, a sort of motorway setup may also be beneficial just from the point of view that it's another way to get across the river. We could try and get a road up over here. I don't necessarily think that's that realistic, um, but it could be something we do have to consider potentially sort of breaking off from this roundabout here and crossing over and just cutting what will eventually be a little uh, nature reserve there. But that might be something we need to consider in the next episode because we've very quickly run out of time here. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please give it a like, subscribe to the channel and ring that notification bell so you get a ding to your device the next time I post a video. Uh, next week will all be about managing traffic in the city. We have sort of built ourselves some limitations in how we can handle traffic with that single bridge being one of those. But um, it should be enjoyable and probably very frustrating as well for you to watch. So you can find links to my social media in the description. So please get on there, like, subscribe, share, join the Discord if you want to join the conversation. I'm always happy to have a chat. And you can also find a link to my Buy Me A Coffee should you want to give something financially to the channel. But until next time, I'm Bob Dendry. This is City Skylines. Thank you so much for watching and goodbye.